Hi, hobby friends. Let's talk about purple. Or maybe violet. Perhaps magenta? All colours are ambiguous to some extent, but probably the most ambiguous part of the colour wheel is the bit where the two ends of the light spectrum are wrapped around and meet each other. For this reason, magenta is a super flexible colour, easy to pull in either direction, and something I think we should all be getting a little more familiar with. Plus, we've seen over and over again in this series that purples, pinks and magentas have all been the most, let's say, reactive colours to work with in underpainting, yielding sometimes unexpected but always really great results. As always, if you haven't seen any of this underpainting series before, I recommend jumping back to the first red video just to get an idea of what we're up to here. Alright, enough preamble, let's take a look at some colours. I'm going back to basics a bit for this one, focusing on single colour blocks. To start with, a burgundy base on our first chap here. Burgundy itself is a pretty ambiguous colour, containing a lot of bluish tones. Let's see if the overpaint pulls it towards warmth, or deeper into the realm of cool purples. Blue for the next guy, starting with my perennial favourite, Molotow Petrol. There's a bit of a gap this week in the underpaint colours, and that gap is green, but there's a little hint of green lurking in petrol, so I don't feel too bad. We are going to take a look at yellow though, and to start that transition, I'm laying in a nice strong orange. Don't forget that we're dealing with subtractive mixing here. Basically, that means the more transparent layers of paint we add, the more we'll move towards black, usually via some shade of brown. Generally then, if you're looking for readable results, it's good to keep your base tones a little bit brighter than you might initially expect. That said, contrast is king, so feel free to play with deeper hues if you like. Speaking of bright colours, take a look at this magenta pink. There was a thought process going on here that ultimately took a different turn as you'll see in just a minute, but I regret nothing. If the world can't handle neon pink sci-fi super soldiers, well, the world can jog on, my friends. Last but not least, a quick zip round of black on the inevitable shiny. One massive benefit of all the work I've been doing on these shiny boys is I've found lots of new ways of making all-over metallic schemes that work for me. Full metallic Necron army, I am ready for you. Time to highlight. Starting at the beginning of the queue with a nice, fully saturated red over the burgundy. Same deal with the blue, laying in a light, bright, saturated blue over the duller petrol base. Look at this lovely transition from orange to yellow. I've got some fire dragon proxies lurking on a shelf behind me, and I'm feeling very inspired by this combo. Pink for the pink god, magenta for the magenta throne. Look at this guy. I do all the metallics in a row at the end because making sure all the mica particles are out of the airbrush after using metallic paints is something I only want to do once every painting session if I can. So I'm jumping back to red now and a massive value and contrast leap to sand yellow. I think the overpainting should blend this nicely, so I'm not too worried about the big jump here. Blue gets a lovely pastel blue built over it. A lot of these guys are looking pretty good as is, to be honest. There are some nice gradations between these colours. I tried a little bit of this peachy skin tone on top of the yellow, and it was an interesting mix, but I'm not 100% convinced it works as well as some of the other transitions. And then, rounding out the chromatic bunch, a good old peach pastel over the king of pink. Here's that shiny who got a loose mid-angle spray of gunmetal, a zenithal highlight of dual aluminium, and a final focused highlight of straight aluminium. I should have left a little bit more black in the shadows on this one, I think, but hey, we're here to play and explore. Okay, here is the slight turn in intention I mentioned earlier. Originally, my plan was to use this little pot of speed paint purple that's newly settled into my paint straw. However, after diluting this down and testing it quickly on my messy board here, I realised this is a really low saturation purple, almost edging into purple-grey territory. 
absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I can see myself using this for a lot of other stuff, but for the sake of this series, I want to stick to nice, saturated overpaints. However, that meant I had to do a turn into the pinker portion of the purple range since I didn't have a cooler purple ink on hand. I ended up using Liquitex Deep Violet, which is a lovely colour. Only semi-transparent though, so lots of thinning and gentle layers here so we retain the full character of our undercolours. If you're enjoying this video by the way, feel free to hit the handy little thumbs up button, and if you like the series in general, subscribing and bell iconing is the one and only way to guarantee you'll see any future instalments. With all the airbrush work done, it's just a case of blocking in a few more colours, throwing on some super matte varnish, a couple of edge highlights and details, a little bit of basing, and pink. Hello Kitty, eat your heart out. Pink is such a great, punchy colour. If it weren't for some slightly childish cultural associations, we might see more of it in the 41st millennium. More than any of the other experiments this week though, the overpainting has flattened out the shading on this one. So, if I were going for a pink mini in the future, I would consider starting with a much deeper shade for my initial tone, or maybe undershading afterwards with a cyan ink. It might have been nice to know what would have happened with a deeper shade of purple over this one, but hey ho, next time maybe. Alright, next up, let's look at yellow. Oh, nice. Not really a purple, but a gorgeous rose red grading into pinks here. These colours are so complex and good looking. I hope they can find a place in an army somewhere. Let me know below if you have any ideas of who would look good in this scheme. Even moodier results from the Red Ranger next. I'm really liking this one. We're finally approaching something close to a purple in the deepest shadows, but it's the in-between mid-tones that are really doing it for me. I absolutely love it when this process produces a colour I can't quite find the right word for, and I think this guy makes it into my top pick slot for this round of the underpainting experiments. Alright, finally something that really is purple. If the red guy is my favourite, this guy is the most practicable. For an Emperor's Children army, this would be my go-to method for getting their armour done. I just love how rich and bluish the shadow tones are, and how punchy and pink the highs get. Slanesh, I hear your calls, but my pile of shame is too big. For now. Last but not least, the shiny. A little more contrast in the base here might have been good, but the overall colour is a good option if you prefer your Emperor's Children to be more on the rose side. Again, as we saw last time, I love the effect of using an ultra matte varnish over metallics. This sort of brushed steel effect looks really nice, and because of the more forgiving nature of true metallic shading, this guy is probably the fastest of the bunch to get done, if speed is a factor for you. Hey guys, guess what? We did it! We've done a full turn of the colour wheel, hitting each of the six major sections. I have a veritable rainbow of Space Marines taking up rather a lot of space on my shelves now, but this has been such an interesting experiment, that is space I am willing to sacrifice. That said, I think there are still some interesting things left to explore. I've got some ideas of where I want to go with underpainting experiments, but maybe you have too. If there's anything you'd like me to look at in a video, any more specific colours or sub-factions, let me know down below. And if you want to join in a longer conversation, or show off some of your own work with a little group of really awesome painters, check out the linked Discord too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.